As you've been carrying on in your day-to-day -day life, what if a global mass extinction event has been quietly mounting? What if I told you that this event started only a few generations ago and started accelerating exponentially just 40 years ago? And in that time, we had lost around 60% of the non-human, non-livestock life on Earth. I'm here to tell you that science has finally caught up and right now, you and I have a front row seat to its sixth mass extinction event. But what if we could avoid that through immersive technology as a tool for industrialized empathy? The previous five mass extinction events were caused by different things, but this one is unique. It's the first anthropogenic one, where we've had extinctions brought on in the past by, say, a single asteroid. This one is being brought on by a single species, sapiens, the greatest of the apes, us. How could that be? Well, we've become systematically disconnected from nature. We've evolved to interpret our needs as a single species as being the most important, and it's caused a lot of damage to, well, everything around us. Habitat loss, global temperature rises, human overpopulation, and biodiversity loss, the list goes on. And here's how I think it all started. At some point in time, we learned to domesticate our food, both animal and plant. We learned to play God and manipulate nature for our benefit. Once wild animals became commoditized so that we learn to ignore that they have emotions and characters. In fact, we bred it out of them and through it we bred indifference into ourselves. All that knowledge we'd built up about coexisting with our natural environment, what to eat, what not to eat, what we could hunt and what would hunt us. And where land could provide and where it could not was all slowly being lost. We didn't need to roam for food any longer, so we built permanent settlements around our farms. We could now produce far more food than ever before, so we procreated, naturally. Then villages expanded. We tore forests down to turn villages into towns as time went by. We then invented ownership. Ownership of property, ownership of food, of resources, a concept that didn't really exist before. Ownership forced us to draw boundaries between ourselves and other species. We turned inward and we became obsessed with ourselves. We continued to expand until we had built cities with sky rises and displaced the natural environments we once called home. We created worlds within our world designed to serve the needs of only a single species. In psychology, there is a measure of how much one feels a part of one natural, one's natural environment. It's called inclusion in nature of self or INS. Let's call it empathy for our natural world. And empathy is the opposite of indifference. One might argue as these events transpired through history that our measure of empathy as an entire species progressively got less and less until we got to today. We're at an all-time low. We have more people alive today than our environment can actually sustain. And because we don't feel much inclusion in nature of self as a species anymore, we also don't really care for it. So when we need something from it, like wood, water, or for it to just kind of move out of the way so we can build something in place of it, it doesn't really matter because our immediate needs have been met. We've chemically evolved to not be able to see that breaking the system which allows our very existence on Earth to continue is bad for us. This is called the cognitive gap. The cognitive gap explains why we care about things that are more personal to us and less about things that are not personal to us. Let's uh, put this into practice through a few examples. This over here is a photo of a household burning down in the recent California fires. I want you to close your eyes for a second and just imagine your own house. Let's say the house that you grew up in. Everything inside it being torched as you watch it burn standing on the street side. These invoke very different chemical reactions in your brain. Let's try another one. How do you feel when you see this image of a captive wild animal? How do you feel when you see this one of a captive human being in an actual human zoo as recently as from 50 or 60 years ago? If I'm right, most of you will have felt horrified about the second image. Why? Because it's more relatable to us. It's more personal. And even though recent events have shown us we have a long way to go in caring equally for our own kind, why do we feel more empathy for the homo sapien than for the animal? This bias is called speciesism. But there is hope, a lot of it, and it comes in the form of technology, 
specifically a toolbox that is known as immersive technology. Some of the most common forms of it are virtual reality and augmented reality. And here's why it all makes a difference. Scientists from Stanford University, amongst others, have proven that feeling immersed, even digitally, enables a psychological state called telepresence. Telepresence is the mind's belief that the body is elsewhere. They've also shown that a heightened sense of immersion almost immediately increases their measure of inclusion in nature of self. So consider this. If you were to visit the rainforest, the Amazon rainforest in real life, it would become a part of you. It would become a transformative experience. You'd no longer think of it as an abstract place that you've heard about in geography class. And if after your visit you heard that it was being cut down for cattle farms, you'd feel sad, you'd feel enraged. And this is how many of us as South Africans have come to love nature. We've had the privilege of experiencing it. But for us to change the course of Earth's trajectory right now, we all need to fall in love with nature. And we can't expect 7 billion people to dive the Great Barrier Reef, see polar bears in the Arctic, or marvel at a sunset over the plains of the Serengeti. Immersive technology democratizes access to nature. Here's where it gets amazing. If you don a VR headset and you're able to explore the Amazon rainforest, your mind does not know that you haven't actually been there. If scientists put sensors all over your body and measured your galvanic skin response, your heart rate, your brain activity through EEG, the biometric data would be indistinguishable from the same experiment in the real place. I would argue that, based on your body's physiological response, you have actually witnessed it, and in a very personal way. So when you hear that it is being engulfed by man-made fires, you experience a heightened sense of personal loss and are far more willing to do something about it. What if schools and zoos and aquariums of tomorrow teach our children about nature through virtual multi-sensory field trips instead of captive wildlife displays? Instead of transporting nature to us in cities and caging it up, we could teleport people to nature. What if we can bridge the cognitive gap and reconnect meaningfully to nature to reverse engineer our apathy? What if immersive tech can help us teach a new generation that nature needs us to be different? that humans are only a small part of a bigger, infinitely complex system, and that its fate is directly linked to our own. This is the beauty my team and I at Habitat XR are trying to bring to the unknown that is our environmental future. Thank you.